I was uh, asked to comment briefly on uh, Jakob's uh, presentation and the paper, uh, the draft uh, for the uh, outline of this report. And that's a great opportunity because, yeah, the work we do at IFAD, of course, is closely related. And um, I was able to already interact uh, with FAO on this report before. So, um, yeah, I hope I can give some constructive comments. So first of all, I really appreciate the very ambitious goal to, to bring out such a report in such a short time. And I was trying to think of uh, what could be kind of points that you can uh, use to, to really find a structure that will lead you to the goal of finding that connection between rural migration and rural development and agricultural development. Um, so one aspect is that of, if we think of drivers of rural, rural migration, to think in terms of uh, constraints and enabling factors, to kind of review the evidence of what, what is the evidence on uh, what are the main constraints that keep people from engaging in migration uh, when it could be beneficial, because in many contexts we know that migration actually can improve the welfare of, of, of households, but due to income constraints and credit constraints, they are not able to engage in these activities. But at the same time, you might find evidence of programs or, um, yeah, or other factors in the environment that can, that can enable people to, to engage in migration in, the, in a more, yeah, in a productive manner, let's say, and, and to follow, follow the, this evidence to, to, to then look at uh, patterns and uh, other data um, that, that reflect these, these uh, factors. So that's one, one suggestion. And uh, the other one is, yeah, I mean, uh, you're, you, you stated that you're working on this, but I, yeah, I really think that it would uh, be very interesting to see what, are, what, what is the environment that these uh, migrants live in. So what is the condition, what are the conditions of uh, these rural areas, of the agricultural production in these areas, and how do they then, uh, yeah, to kind of set the scene more for uh, um, for those rural migrants, migrants, where 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 do they live? Uh, what are the yeah? What does the agriculture economy look like in different regions in the countries? And what can we then maybe conclude what the, what that could mean for for migration? And another point, just a kind of small side note in terms of policy recommendations. I on the one hand, I ve I very much understand that you don't want to give a clear um, a, a message of you should yeah, either pro or contra migration policies. And there is, however, some evidence on an, uh, seasonal migration projects between countries, so especially in the kind of uh, Southeast Asian, Oceania region, um, where uh, bilateral, yeah, where countries find agreements uh, for specific seasonal work programs and uh, there's some research on the impacts of that, so I think it could be worth to investigate what that means for, for those uh, migrant workers and for the rural areas that they might leave behind, but also how that might have improved the conditions at the destinations and the origins. Um, so even that, yeah, even though you wouldn't necessarily make a policy recommendation, you can um, learn something about seasonal migration and how that can be shaped by the policy makers. And um, yeah, and again, uh, in terms of the protracted crisis, um, I guess we, we all know that this is a big, big challenge to, to find yeah, one narrative when you have so many different, uh, different types of crises that can uh, trigger migration or that uh, can be caused partially by, by the arrival of a lot of migrants or displaced people. And also there, maybe if you think a little bit more about uh, constraining factors or enabling factors, uh, so if you think of the climate change uh, triggered migration, that you think again more like what are the constraints that these people face due to the climate change or um, if there's a, yeah, like a political crisis, what, uh, what, what constraints are created that then either lead to more or less migration. Yeah, and I think that's, I have a few more notes I will send to you via email. <laughs> Thank you.